Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady of Victory Cathedral as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our processional hymn is found in the Missalette, number 238, Out of the Depths, number 238. Please stand. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We continue on our Lenten journey as we begin this fifth week, this opportunity to draw closer to the Lord Jesus. We join with all of those that are praying with us this Mass by means of television, those in nursing homes and in their ho the homebound and those in their homes right now praying with us. In a special way, we remember all of those our brothers and sisters in hospitals, all the sick, those who are suffering, we join with them in asking the Lord Jesus to heal them. In our reading today, as we continue to celebrate also this third scrutiny, we celebrate the fact that Jesus has come to raise us to new life, just as He raised Lazarus from the dead. Not just physically, that one day we will be with God, we pray in heaven, but that Jesus helps us to die to self so that He will raise us here to new life in His love and goodness, to come to know the ways of Jesus. And for those times that we have fallen on our journey, for the times that we have failed, we ask the Lord to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Secretary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also 
through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to him, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So when Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus, said to his fellow fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and asking for you. 
As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd, here I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, the good news is that gospel is only read once a year, so you don't have to stand that long until next, uh, the next fifth Sunday of Lent. Now, obviously, the miracle that we have going on here is the raising of Lazarus from death back to life. But within this story, I believe that we actually have another miracle that's taking place. There's a tiny sentence in the middle of that long dialogue, and in the midst of the story, that that sentence, I believe, is just as profound as the miracle itself. It's the shortest verse that we have in the entire Bible, and it's only three words. In John chapter 11, verse 35, it reads, And Jesus wept. It's a simple three-worded sentence but I believe it carries very significant weight. And why is it so important? Well, because it shows that God cares. That's what that sentence says to us, that God and Jesus care about us. They care about what we are going through. Jesus is the second person of the Holy Trinity, who was with God the Father in the beginning of the creation of the world back in Genesis chapter 1. And this very God who created all of this and every one of us and everything in it, the Lord of the universe, is here weeping over the sadness of losing a very good friend of his. This should be very comforting to all of us because it tells us that no matter what we are going through in life, It could be the death of a loved one, trouble in our marriage, trouble with a teenager, loss of a job, whatever it is, whatever difficulty we are going through, God cares. He cares about us. When Jesus took on human flesh, 
He took on the full range of human emotions as well. In the first Sunday of Lent, we read about Jesus being tempted in the desert, and that story tells us how Jesus understands the difficulties that we have when we struggle and resist sin. But this story is the other side of being human. It's not dealing with sin, but it's the emotions that we feel throughout our life. He understands the difficulty and pain that we go through on whatever it may be. And I've probably said it before, but I'll say it again, that Christianity is the most unique religion in the world. There is no other religion that has a God so close to us like our God. Take Judaism or Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Zoroastrian, whatever re world religion out there, there is no religion that's like Christianity. Our God cares so much about us that he weeps with us when we are going through a difficult time. And all we have to do is open ourselves up to God and let him into our lives. We have to be open to letting God comfort us during these moments. If the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead isn't enough to give us unlimited confidence in Christ, then this verse should be enough. That Jesus is God, all-knowing and all-powerful. And yet, in the face of his friend's death, and in the face of the grief of his other friends, Martha and Mary, he is moved to tears. Jesus Christ is not a distant God. Jesus wept and he weeps. He weeps with us when we weep. Jesus wept with Martha and Mary before he raised Lazarus from the dead because he wanted to assure us that he will always be with us in our sufferings too. When we are tempted to be angry at God or to feel abandoned by him, we need only think of the shortest verse in the Bible, and Jesus wept. I now invite our elect, Marissa Martinez, to come forward with her sponsor. Today the church calls to the elect to conversion, to deepen their resolve to hold fast to Christ, and to carry out the decision to love God above all. And so let us all kneel and in silence, pray at this time for our sister to be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin, and strength of will to live in true freedom as a child of God. Bow your heads and pray. I invite you to stand while Marissa continues to kneel. My dear elect, I invite you to join your prayers to this community of faith. And as you remain kneeling, we ask that God will be with you as we seek God's blessings upon you. Let us pray for this elect whom God has called, that she remain faithful to Him and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life.
always with her, strengthening her in facing the difficult losses in life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Eucharistic food, which she is soon to receive, source of life and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may walk in newness of life and show to the world the power of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the whole world which God has created in love may flower in faith and charity and so receive new life. We pray to the Lord. especially for Otto Schultz, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of life, dead, but of the living, you sent your Son to proclaim life, to snatch us from the realm of death, and to lead us to the resurrection. Free this elect from the death-dealing power of the spirit of evil, so that she may bear witness to her new life in the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite all of us to extend our hands as we pray over Marissa. Lord Jesus, by raising Lazarus from the dead, you showed that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Free from the grasp of death, this one who awaits your life-giving sacraments and deliver her from the spirit of corruption. Through your Spirit who gives life, fill her with faith, hope, and charity, that she may live with you always in the glory of your resurrection. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. I invite those of our candidates to join our elect, Marissa, as you come forward to continue to break open God's Word. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God, which we, you have heard proclaimed today with all of us. Be reassured of our loving support and of our prayers for you on your journey. We look forward soon to that day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. And in the faith that we profess, let us open our hearts and let us proclaim what we believe as followers of Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God. 
begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, for our sin, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of my life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 223, Awake, O Sleeper, Rise from Death, number 223.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and his eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come on Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await to the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, Father.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Our communion hymn will be number 239, Taste and See, number 239.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 236, On Wings of Change, number 236.